Going to Israel, you had to get to New York, so you got a, in a whole van full of <laughs> Christian storytellers yes, and, and you know, you know, the, <laughs> what we've referred to affectionately as yes. the back of the bus people. So tell us about then what happened as you're over in Israel. Um, I had pretty much made up my mind before I went to Israel. It's like the, the word hypocrite kept resonating in my mind. It's like I am not going to be a hypocrite on this. So I really worked hard at reading the Bible stories and, and getting into the actual Bible and studying it, reading it. Then I called John one day and I said, I'm church shopping. And I just went to the Yellow Pages and I live in a very rural area and I look in the Yellow Pages and I call him. I said, my gosh, we have a lot of churches. I said, I, how do I pick one? I don't know what to do. And uh, he said, well, that's an interesting question. And he took it so seriously. He said, let me think about it a bit and then I'll call you back. So you called me back later in the day and the advice was so simple but so effective. He said, just pick one with the understanding that it, it might not be the one you stay with. But go, start, you know, get involved in that. So I thought, okay. So I drove over to the neighboring town because one of uh, my daughter's teachers, her husband, was a minister at that church. I, well, that might be a good one. I drove over and the shrubs weren't clipped and there was a window broken. And I thought, no, it the church has to be more important to them. So I just literally drove around the county looking at churches. And I actually, I drove along Carlisle Lake. It's a beautiful drive. And there's this little church sitting there. And I looked at it and I thought, that's a church. It, it's right by Carlisle Lake. So on the front of the church, there's this great big anchor for years. I thought it was a yachting club. I didn't know. <laughs> And I noticed the sign, Carlisle Christian Church. I thought, well, this is cute. This would be a nice drive. You know, way to pick your church. So <laughs> I drove into the parking lot, and the, uh, the pastor was there, the minister was there, and I went and I said, hi, I'm church shopping. And he kind of laughed, and we just got talking. So I joined that church. Well, I didn't join. I started going to that church every week because I wanted that under the belt before I went to Israel. Yeah. But because I, I knew... I, I had made the commitment I was going to be Christian. I was going to get baptized. I just didn't yet know what church I was going to belong to, but I wanted to be attending before I got there. And so you got to Israel, and then you were going to the sites. Tell us a little, little bit about uh, while you're in Israel. The sites were overwhelming. Just a week or two ago, I was looking through some of my pictures, and it was amazing to me how often one of the storytellers or one of the people with us would be off to the side, completely away from the group, because y you were just filled with emotion, positive, negative, oh, but just overwhelming. And uh, so, and then our little back of the bus group in the mornings we would have. When we devotionals. refer to the back of the bus group, they were the rowdy ones, <laughs> and that's <laughs> that why we refer to them. They you. were back of the bus. Mm. <laughs> they were yeah. They, they were they were rowdy, laughing. Yeah. Everyone else was going like this, you know, looking back, and and they didn't care. And they're they're and educating me too. It, I don't know if Anne remembers this or not. This is how dumb I was. <laughs> Those are, I shouldn't say dumb, but just not knowing things. We would have our little morning devotional, and then we'd close with a prayer. So one morning, Buck turns to me and asks if I would do the morning, if I would do the closing prayer. And I kind of panicked, and I said, could I just pass on that today? And he's like, yeah, sure. So he did it. So as we're walking in, I grabbed Anne, and I said, teach me the closing prayer. <laughs> she said, what? And I said, what are the words to it? And she started laughing. She said, there are no words. It's what's in your heart. And I said, oh. <laughs> I thought it was a memorized prayer. I didn't know. Yeah. So it was a big learning experience working with them. But the whole group just took me under wing. They're, they're pulling me aside, talking with me, and just really encouraging me and uplifting me. We were at Nazareth, and you were you were uh, you pulled aside um, John and Cheryl, uh, and uh, you say, you know, I just got a question about uh, uh, 
doing good works and grace. Oh, yeah. And, and, and just I mean, and, and you can and you can uh, you can correct me here, but um, and so I, I just don't understand that. So John sat down with you and, and explained the whole thing about good works and grace. And from what I remember him saying, you said, "All right, stop. I, uh, <laughs> let me think on this." You know, so yeah. let me think on it. And, and um, so uh, you went to bed that night, and, and, and I and we found out later you spent half the night thinking about I that did. thing. And so in the morning before breakfast, you saw John and Cheryl, and you said, "Come here, come here." Yeah, yeah. <laughs> now let me explain it to you. Yes. Yeah. And uh, so they sat, and then you explained to them, and John said. You nailed it. Yeah, and and that would happen repeatedly. So ever we'd be walking along, and then I'd find John and Cheryl say, "Give me my lesson for the day," <laughs> and he would he would explain something to me. I say, "Okay, I'm thinking on it." And then the next day, I'd track him down and say, "Okay, here's my take on it." You know, and I would feel so the whole group just kept doing that. You know, and then. At that point, too, I even remember I just had a Bible on my Kindle, and I wanted to get a physical, I wanted a Bible in my hand, you know. And so everybody was sit, would sit next to me with their Bible and show me different types of Bibles. Here, get this one, get that one. And then one day, oh, I can't remember who it was, one of the guys said, here, just you know, go through the Bible a little bit. So I'm sitting in the back of the bus with the back of the bus people, and I'm flipping through that Bible. <laughs> and Pam Holcomb still laughs because I'm, Re and I said, oh my gosh, i got to get me one of these things. <laughs> these are really good stories. You know? And they're all just laughing at me. So then one day, I'm, I'm looking at it, and I'm reading. So it was an application Bible. So the first page always had things like, you know, who wrote it, when it was written, just some background information. And I'm, I open it up to Exodus, and it says, written by Moses. I'm like, did you guys know that Moses wrote the book of Exodus? <laughs> so, of course, they're all just roaring, laughing again. I said, oh, I, I guess you all knew that. <laughs> you know? I remember the, the, the day because you, you, you were, you know the, the, you know, the act of baptism was your decision. That, 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 you're saying, if, if I do that, then that means I have crossed the bridge. I, yeah. I, I, and, 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 and there's... And there's and there's no going back, you know. Yeah. And I, I remember you even saying, and, and you were so nervous that day as, as we walked down towards the water. Uh, even, even after you got the white, the white robe on, you know, <laughs> <You're> not, <laughs> you're just not shaking. sure. And uh, I think it was Cheryl that was actually yeah. pulled you aside, and yeah. you two prayed, and and. Uh, yeah, because I was, I think, about third in line, and I kept taking whoever was behind me and pushing them in front of me until it got down to where the only one left was Cheryl. And she turned me around, she hugged me, and she says, what's wrong? She says, you're really nervous. And I was just crying, and I said, Cheryl, I said, I've failed at so many things in my life, and I can't fail at this. This is a lifelong decision. And she kind of smiled, and she said, you're going to fail. Every day, you're going to have failures. And she said, and then you pick up that Bible and you read or you call your support. And she says, and you keep moving forward, she said, and, and don't think about the failures. Keep moving forward. And that just took all that pressure off of me. I, w I was given permission to fail. And so I got in that water and you and Doug baptized me. Yeah, yeah. We